Hello, and welcome to the History of Fallout. On today's episode, we'll be covering the Sierra Madre. The Sierra Madre is a pre-war city in the former American Southwest. It serves as the setting for the Fallout New Vegas add-on, Dead Money. Constructed somewhere close to the Grand Canyon, east of the Mojave Desert, the Sierra Madre is composed of the villa, resort, and casino built above it. Both were designed and financed by one man, Frederick Sinclair. Intended to be his last venture ahead of an impending nuclear apocalypse, the Sierra Madre was intended as a place for guests to reserve their fortunes and begin again. At its core, the city was intended to remain a remote and reclusive place for the affluent. All conveniences were supplied to the inhabitants by vending machines designed by the genius minds of Big MT, which provided a number of commercial and non-commercial services and allowed the residents to live in self-sufficiency, even when cut off from the outside world. The goal of the entire enterprise was not only to create a prospering casino, but to create the perfect shelter from the nuclear holocaust. Every last piece of technology and security measure was for the purpose of longevity and protection of its inhabitants. In design, Sinclair was drawn to the nostalgic Art Deco era. This is reflected in the architecture of the villa and the casino. To make it a perfect opening gala, Sinclair strengthened the frequency emissions of the city's telecommunications, normally reserved for the emergency broadcast signals to outside authorities. The kitchens of the Sierra Madre aimed for a five-star rating and sought to bring in the best chefs from around the world. In order to meet with deadlines and budgets, the construction of the Sierra Madre was handled by two different companies, a well-performing company for the casino and a cheaper, slacking, corrupt company for the villa, resulting in numerous incidences during the construction of the villa. As guardians of paradise, Sinclair forbade any other food or vending machines beyond the ones he had installed there, and banned any personal contrabands like chems, alcohol, and foreign substances, which created a black market from the workers within. Part of the city's security measures was to prevent such contrabands from entering the villa area. They were well known to have conducted inspections of the Poista del Sol construction offices, confiscating prohibited items. Obsessed with security, likely due to his own financial losses in 2070, Sinclair installed holograms, a futuristic technology purchased on an exclusive contract by Sinclair. The doors of the Sierra Madre were designed to be hermetically sealed in case of emergency, and the speakers were shielded to prevent vandalism. The Sierra Madre Casino and Resort were equipped with an automated front desk that would escort guests to their rooms upon arrival, and security systems that would stun those entering with a foreign substance or contaminated by radiation. Unbeknownst to most of the city's inhabitants, there was a darker side to the Madre. In return for the technology supplied by the mines of Big MT, Sinclair allowed them free reign of the villa and its inhabitants to serve as proving grounds for various experimental technologies, such as the Saturnite alloy, hazmat suits, airborne toxins, etc. In his push for making the Sierra Madre a cutting-edge fallout shelter, Sinclair remained oblivious to the city of the previous deals with Big MT, ending up as Faustian bargains, such as Hopeville and its disaster meteorological research project. In the Sierra Madre, the catch came in the form of the cloud. The cloud, created as an experiment by the executives of Big MT, the cloud is a project of the research conducted at the Z43 Initiative Toxins Plant. When the Madre owner, Frederick Sinclair, came to Big MT for technology to add to his resort, he unwittingly signed a Faustian pact along with the holograms and matter recombiners. The Big MT scientists also conducted tests of the cloud's lethality at the Sierra Madre using the casino, villa, and its inhabitants as guinea pigs in its experiments. Sinclair likely saw no other way to get the technology he needed, as he was already teetering on the brink of bankruptcy when he started negotiating with the executives. Of course, he was not informed that they would be receiving 
more than just harmless prototypes. The Sierra Madre was the only testing ground that was protected by the cloud, which was hardly a prize. The cloud manifested itself for the first time when the cheap villa ventilation system ground to a halt. A victim of cutting corners and Mr. Yesterday's dubious practices. The pipes backed up, spewing out the red cloud. Workers in the area started choking and vomiting, hospitalized in the villa clinic. The damage to their health was extensive enough to put them out of commission for good. To deal with the problem, Sinclair negotiated with big MT executives for yet another technology, the dark light hazmat suits. Although considered creepy by the maintenance crew, they allowed the crew to explore the ventilation systems and try in vain to identify the source of the cloud. The teams managed to find the source of the problem in the main ventilation pipe. However, traces of the dust cloud were present and eroded through the metal of the suit's locks exposing them to the cloud and sealing them within. The crewmen retreated and headed to the villa clinic to get medical attention. Much to the displeasure of the attending physicians, they cut themselves out of the suits with steak knives. However, despite the problems, the ventilation system was eventually restored to barely functioning order. When the Great War hit shortly afterwards, it continued to work for a few more years before finally giving up the ghost. The cloud gradually swept into the area, climbing out of the damaged vents, eventually blanketing the area and blotting out the sun. It became a grim, uncompromising guardian of its secrets. The maintenance crews who donned the hazmat suits and tried to fight it succumbed to its effects, mutating and becoming the violent, savage guardians of the Sierra Madre. For centuries, the cloud protected the casino and the villa, killing scavengers or weakening them so that they could become another victim of the tribe inhabiting it, the hazmat-suited ghost people. It wasn't until the 23rd century that it became important once more. Father Elijah, a disgraced Brotherhood of Steel elder, learned of its existence from Ulysses, it inspired him when preliminary samples taken from the air on the edges of the Sierra Madre yielded promising results. He had set up a chemistry set to allow it to replenish itself and traveled to the Madre in person to perform research on site. Upon further research, Elijah decided to weaponize the cloud as a weapon of mass destruction to wipe the slate clean. It was intended to be used to reclaim the Mojave and destroy the new California Republic. He also plans to use it as an offensive technology, unleashing it upon the Mojave, cutting it off from the rest of the world. He could then use modified Repcon rockets to push out both the new California Republic and the Caesars Legion at Hoover's Dam, and finally let traces of it drift west to NCR territory. The Sierra Madre Villa Constructed to serve as the private city of guests, employees, and workers of Frederick Sinclair's remote resort, the villa was deliberately built in the shadow of the Sierra Madre Casino and Resort. The streets were deliberately designed so that it was next to impossible to maneuver in a vehicle in order to eliminate air pollution and noise nuisance. In addition to the main road leading past the holographic fountain up to the resort, the villa was comprised of four districts. A medical district containing the villa clinic, Puesta del Sol, which witnessed numerous clashes and arguments involving the casino construction crews. Most construction efforts seemed to have exhausted momentum and money by the time the bombs fell. A residential district for the casino high rollers and entertainers, Sala de Sol, the home of the church and many of the casino staff. Delays in construction of Puesta del Sol resulted in Salida del Sol's construction lagging behind schedule. Unbeknownst to Sinclair, a contractor named Mr. Yesterday had been grifting him and arranged for the use of cheap materials and skipping on proper safety measures with the crew pocketing the money made from their earlier cutting corners. The material used for the villa's construction was described as sand barely held together with spit and glue. 
Buildings and constructions in the villa were completely unstable and could collapse overnight. All of this caused construction crews to suffer numerous setbacks and accidents. To prevent the employees of the Sierra Madre from discovering these facts, senior persons destroyed all medical reports and also ensured that they themselves were protected legally from liability. In addition, shipping problems plagued the villa. Construction explosives, countless crates of steak knives, and more were shipped to the villa, paid for, and left out in the open. The Sierra Madre Casino and Resort is more than just a remote private getaway location. It is the material testament to one man's inability to let go. Fearing that the world was turning towards nuclear apocalypse, Frederick Sinclair, the chief architect and financier of this grand fortress, wished only to save Vera Keys, his love, from the looming destruction. To this end, the Sierra Madre Villa and its capstone casino were built. But that was not enough for Sinclair. Deep within the basement of the casino, a nearly impenetrable vault was constructed as well to make sure he and his love could survive the world's destruction beyond, together. Accordingly, security was of the utmost importance, and National Electric was contracted to provide it. Any foreign objects or unauthorized entrants were detected by security measures and immediately apprehended. Further, an emergency broadcast emitter was built into its telecommunications network, linked to a myriad of holograms that would activate, patrol the casino and executive suites, and exercise lethal force on unauthorized visitors to protect the hotel guests under their charge. The casino was also lined with a specially made metal that would interfere with radio reception and broadcasts out of the casino. This was done to ensure that the radio frequencies from within the casino would not interfere with the hologram beacons in the villa sending out an emergency signal so no surviving authorities would be able to detect it and come to save Miss Keys within the casino. However, despite all his preparations, Sinclair failed to realize sooner that his plans were compromised from the beginning. Vera was secretly colluding with the lounge singer Dean Domino in a plot to manipulate and emotionally destroy the man who had loved her in order to steal the treasures of the Sierra Madre for themselves. Domino had initially enlisted Vera's aid in his planned heist, later resorting to blackmailing her with evidence of her Medex addiction. Once Vera started expressing doubts, completely unaware that she only used the drugs to cope with her terminal illness. Upon learning the truth, Sinclair's heart shattered and became filled with bitterness and a desire for revenge. He modified the vault's security protocols, transforming the would-be shelter into a trap. Sinclair ensured that the elevator down to the vault only went in one direction, and upgraded his security holograms to make sure that rescue would never come for Vera and Domino once they entered the vault. However, after Vera later broke down and confessed everything, Sinclair was filled with remorse and tried to reverse his changes. But it was too late. The casino developed into a death trap. Sinclair himself dying to an accidental fall within the vault, separated from his beloved forever. The guests' terrible fate was carried out when, as the bombs fell around Sierra Madre, they were slaughtered by the automated security, mistaking them for intruders. Their last calls for help was recorded by the systems. Vera Keys herself became a prisoner in her own suite. Her last words to Sinclair recorded by the system and spoken from holographic duplicates, living on as ghosts in the executive suites. Some time after, Vera chose to take her own life using the drugs that kept her alive, only after writing her final words, let go, on the walls of her bedroom. Hey, thank you for watching the history of Fallout. Special thanks to Nukipedia for all information you heard today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.